All right, how's it going? Um, I don't really know how to start this. Uh, it, Brady here, and sitting beside me is Carl. Carl, say hi. All right, anyways, Carl's here. Um, <laughs> hi! We're, uh, we're gonna start this. It's funny, because actually, before I went to go, uh, when I first told my girlfriend about this podcast, and uh, I said I was gonna be doing it with you, she said, Oh great! And I said, "What?" She said, "I'm gonna have to have my my finger on the the volume button for every time Carl goes to talk. I'll have to turn it way down." <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Carl lives in an apartment building. Um, so anyway, what? <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna start doing this podcast. Um, if the audio quality isn't great, we kind of apologize for that. Um, right now, we're filming it on a cell phone. Um, but with, you know, uh, if you, if you don't already know, um, I run a YouTube channel, uh, Brady TV, and, uh, we're going to be potentially getting a new microphone for that shortly, um, and it will be able to double as a microphone for, for this as well. Uh, so yeah, so we don't really have a name for this yet. I think time being it's called Nameless Podcast, um, but that's kind of, you know, we had decided that's a little bit of a... A lazy approach um, temporary a temporary lazy approach uh, so yeah uh, without further ado I think we're just gonna kind of hop right into it um, I don't know how often this is gonna happen right now um, it'd be cool to kind of do it once a week uh, but it'll depend on um, schedules. it'll depend on schedules and stuff like that if it does happen once a week it'll probably be uh, every Wednesday uh, that we get this up, and, and yeah, so, all right, let's dive right into it. <coughs> all right, so for our first, uh, for our first podcast, I think we're going to talk about, uh, video games. Um, I don't really know how this is going to work as far as regular topics. I don't know, you know, this may just turn into a, a video game exclusive podcast. We could end up talking about, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I, I, I really don't know what's going to happen. Um... So, anyways, uh, yeah, so, I guess I've been playing more video games lately than I, I would normally. Um, actually, I'm kind of coming out of that. I was playing a lot for quite a while, um, and it was the Mass Effect series. I'd kind of stumbled into it. I had known about it for a while. didn't know a whole lot about it. Carl had a copy of it um, that I borrowed and played a little bit and really kind of liked it. For those of you who don't know, Mass Effect is a three-part series. Um, it's an RPG that takes place in space, uh, but the really, really cool thing about it is that the decisions that you make greatly affect and carry on into the next game. Uh, so if you let one of your teammates die over the other teammate, then, then yeah, that'll carry on and, and you either will see or won't see certain characters in the next game. So that's really cool. Um, and that was a little bit before Christmas that he, he lent it to me. Um, and then on Boxing Day I found, uh... All three in this really nice trilogy set for about thirty-five bucks, um, so I I kind of just splurged and got that. Um, yeah, and, and I'm I'm kind of like that with video games. Um, I'm kind of a completist. When I was first getting into Assassin's Creed, I think they were up to four Assassin's Creed games at that point. They had AC One, AC Two, AC Brotherhood, and AC Revolutions. Revelations. Revolution. Um, but, uh, yeah, when I, when I ordered the first one online, I ordered the other three just kind of on spec, right? Kind of, I'm going to play this, and if it's as good as everyone else is saying it's good, then I'm going to want to play all four. Um, and then, yeah, even though Assassin's Creed has greatly gone downhill story-wise, um, somewhat mostly redeemed in this last, uh, Assassin's Creed Blacklist, or Black Flag, Blacklist was uh, Splinter Cell. Um, yeah, I, I uh, I'm a completist, right? There, as, as long as I keep releasing them, I'm probably gonna probably gonna keep wasting money on them. Um, so yeah, what have, what have you been? Are you playing video games, Carl? Uh, not as much as I used to. Uh, you're letting me borrow Batman: Arkham City Origins. Origins. City was the <laughs> last one. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. I'm really enjoying that a little bit. You when suck I get at it now. Play it. Oh, it's, 
<laughs> not that it's just rusty. But you, you were so uh, aside good at the from other that, ones. the only other game I'm really playing when I do play is uh, Mech Warrior Online. I'm a, On your computer? Yeah, I'm a big mech head, and uh, Mech Warrior is a lot of fun. It's pretty much just uh, twelve versus twelve. Uh, uh, mash up uh, death matches pretty much but uh, you get to uh, buy big stompy robots and you get to put whatever weapons you want on them pretty much right. and uh, go go to town with the, your team and blow the other team out of the water if you can or get blown out of the water and either way I really yeah. enjoy it and it's a lot of fun and yeah and it's free to play right for yep. the most part you can spend some real world money and deck your stuff right out if you want to but yeah, get a little make progress a little quicker if you spend some actual money but yeah you don't have to spend any money on it um but yeah it's a it's a good game it's a lot of fun uh so i i just haven't been playing as much as i normally do but it's not a bad thing real world stuff uh is more important anyway at times so yeah and i and i mean it you know and i i get the same way something will, you know a couple months from now watch dogs will come out and i'll uh you know, I'll probably have two or three weeks of pretty solid gaming, and then, you know, that'll run its course, and it'll be another couple of months before something yeah. something big comes out. It's been a while since anything's really kind of held my attention for a long period of time. Yeah. 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 So what kind of, like, what genres are you partial um, to? I play almost anything. I like a good multiplayer game. Uh, I like... Uh, RPGs and first-person shooters, and uh, uh, I don't mind uh, the odd action adventure game, but uh, yeah, not uh, too uh, too particular on what I play as long as it's a good, solid game with a good story and good gameplay elements. It's uh, worth my it makes it worth my time then. I'll give it the time of day if it is. So there's, there's, is there anything you specifically? I know you're not a, not a Grand Theft Auto Saints Row kind of. Well, that's more just uh, the content. The content that kind of drives me away from those particular games. Right. I don't mind open world games. I mean, like. Uh, oh, some of it's really, it's really impressive yeah. what oh, they can yeah. do. Like the some of the superhero games that have become open world, like Spider Man and Infamous and yeah things like that. Those games are a lot of fun. Right. right, so you can go around and you can save people and yeah, and Watch Dogs is and, Watch Dogs is going to be a sandbox. Yeah, program. that'll be a really cool game. Cool. That one that's interests me. Cool. Yeah, like I said, lately I've just been playing a lot of Mass Effect. Um, before that, I was playing Black Flag a whole bunch. Uh, I'll probably get back into when I bought Arkham. I'm a I'm a huge Arkham franchisee victim. Um, <laughs> It's a good word for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when Origins, I, I pre-ordered the 150 or 100, however much it was, the collector's edition to get the the statue and all the DLC, and I also paid the twenty dollars to get the seasons pass. So I, I gave them more money than anything was ever worth. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so and I'll probably get back and I'll probably steal that back from you and. A couple of weeks or a month or two, um, they're releasing some more storyline uh, that I've technically paid for, I guess, for the seasons past, and I just haven't gotten it yet. Um, Genre-wise, uh, you know, uh, I mostly like action adventure um, or an RPG kind of. Uh, I don't know what you, what you would call it, first person or third person action adventure. I like you know like I, I, the Arkham games and um, a lot of the Assassin's Creed game mechanics. Uh, like I said, not so much the story anymore. Um, um, I do have the Saints Row series. Like I said, they've gone. You know, I had I didn't say they have gone extremely downhill too. In my opinion, the second one was the best one, but I keep buying them because I kind of. That's what I do, right? And I'm, ho I'm, I'm hoping, right? I'm hoping. They got their claws in you. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, the game sucks, and then at the last minute, the very last minute, they throw in like a huge cliffhanger, and you're like, ah, you know, snap. Now I gotta know. Um, yeah, 
but basically just anything, you know, not a big first person shooter kind of guy. Um, there are, there's obviously exceptions to that. I'm not like a run in, run and gun him kind of, you know, uh, Battlefield or, or uh, Call of Duty. No. And Norm, I don't mind them, but I would prefer, I prefer, if it's a shooter, I prefer a little more strategy. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, MechWarrior Online, which is one of the games I'm playing right now, it's, it's technically a first-person shooter. You're in the cockpit of the mech, so you, you can't pull out the third person, but you're meant to play it in the, inside yeah. the mech, mech, and it's, uh, you can't run and gun at it. If you try and try and take on the whole team alone, you're not even going to get a single kill, because yeah. they're just going to kn knock you down before you even get a chance to open fire. Well, and, but you really like uh, Ghost Recon, right? Well, yeah, like, it's, 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 it's a lot the same more thing, right? It's strategy, it's realism, yeah. right? You know, My you, you got to be work with your team to win. You can't be the uh, the lone hero. Yeah, I like stuff mostly uh, close stuff to that. Uh, I like Splinter Cell. Um, technically, not a first person shooter, um, but does have shooter elements to it. It's a stealth action. Um, would be the, the, the two genre. closest, I guess, first-person shooters. One of them I don't even consider necessarily solely a first-person shooter. The other I do. The one first-person shooter that I did really like, my exception to it, um, was the Rainbow Six series. Vegas Vegas 2. It's pretty much one of my favorites. It's, it's a super solid thing. I really hope they get this. If I had to go to a shooter... Uh, of choice, it would be Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six. I'm really hoping they get this Rainbow Six Patriots off the ground. Um, That's been quiet for quite a while. Quite a while. Uh, but the the division looks like it may kind of pull a lot of what we loved from that. Well, that the division is going to be a lot different though, because they're going from what I've heard, they are integrating a lot of RPG elements. Well, yeah, and it's well. like it's, a, and it's, MMO it's an MMO. Yeah. It too. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that has a lot of first-person shooter to it, it also has a lot of stealth to it, it's also an open-world game. Probably the game right now that I'm the most anticipating uh, another addition in the franchise is Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3 was above and beyond any of the other Far Cries, above and beyond pretty much any game that's out there right now for that kind of style of game. It just, you know, it had... I only had one complaint with that game, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that was that was an an I'm, excellent game. I'm a fan of the series as a whole. The series as a whole has been all yeah. really solid. Um, there were some irritating little, things in the they, second they've one. They've got they just released uh, the original uh, HD remake on the Xbox Live You're Marketplace. So it's only ten dollars. So I'm a little tempted to go back and relive those glory days of the yeah. original Fire Cry because it was it was pretty pretty freaking awesome game and it'll look better now so you won't yeah. feel like you're playing that old old no, thing nothing wrong with feeling like you're <laughs> playing that old thing my biggest problem with the second one was malaria it was such a like it yeah it was kind of a, a neat thing that you had to worry about that but there were a lot of times where it's like i really can't progress i've got to backtrack all the way now i gotta go get more medicine for my malaria so what he's talking about if you haven't played the game is in the game it's big open world and it's in Africa, but right at the very beginning of the game, before you even get to move your character around and do your own thing, he comes down with malaria. So right off the hop, as, you're as given... As you do. Yeah. <laughs> right off the hop, this priest gives you a pill bottle full of malaria pills, and as you go through the game, every once in a while, you, the screen goes all fuzzy, and you've got to tap a certain button to take one of your pills, and your little, it show, has a little picture of your pill bottle, and it slowly empties and once it's empty and you you need to go back to the priest and do a mission for him and then he'll give you more pills so and the missions he sends you on are to help get refugees out of the country and you need to do that because if you don't take your malaria pills well then malaria does what it does <laughs> yeah which i don't know what that is but it's nasty it makes your screen go fuzzy <laughs> yeah uh so I'll be honest, um, I'm more of a, a single player, lone wolf pack kind of guy. Um, yeah, and, and there are, I don't, I don't really know what to say. Uh, 
I like when I'm when I'm going to go play a game. I want something that has a good story, um, which is part of why I think I don't like Call of Duty. I don't like Battlefield. And people say, "Oh, but it's got a story, isn't it?" Right? Well, yeah, it does. Um, obviously, a pretty much every video game, uh, unless you're looking at like a sport game or a, a racing game. Um, and not even for all racing games, some racing games have a story. Pretty much all games have somewhat of a story. But when you get into something like uh, um, Call of Duty or or Battlefield or any of those run and shoot 'em kind of things, um, it's just the stories just kind of fill between the shooting, right? It's kind of like lots and lots of shooting, right? Like you never you never see a Call of Duty game with a you know a, a critically acclaimed best story, video game story of the year, most motivating, blah, blah, blah. You always see most realistic shooter, right? And that's because all they're going for are, are great shooting mechanics and... Usually an RPG or action-adventure takes the story... To the next level. Yeah. It, it, you know, I find when I'm playing Mass Effect, when I'm playing um, Assassin's Creed, when I'm playing, definitely when I'm playing Arkham, uh, like, I want to, I got to know right what happens next and you're kind of motivated to to keep going and finish the game and um you know same with far cry was that way uh what are some other good ones um la noir was a really good one i blew through that was a three disc game um it was a sandbox or an, an open world 1930s i believe um you play like an old cop back in like the old mafia gangster days and it was really 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 neat um but yeah you're you're basically not just you start off as a cop but then you turn into kind of an investigator um and and you're solving cases and stuff and it was just so good um so yeah and and i mean there are there are exceptions for me um to that kind of first shooter category there are ones that i feel like do integrate a story really well or maybe if they don't have a story they at least give me they give me more than just running in and shooting um the two that are popping into my mind right now excuse me are uh gears of war um i like the gears of war series uh and that's maybe my my guilty pleasure is maybe the one that doesn't have too huge of a story although it kind of does right it gives you more motivation behind it you're kind of this they give they give you a lot of backstory they give you a lot of context to what's going on um and the other one that i really like carl's making a face at me right now he doesn't really agree no because if you played back when gears of war first came out the story was very what's going on yeah and then true by by the when you finish the that first the first game you're like, I still don't know where these creatures came from. Yeah. Why they're they attacking? Why is my there's outfit so, so many, ugly? There's so many <laughs> still. There's so so many questions yeah. unanswered, and you're just like, huh? But maybe maybe that's what drew you into playing the next one. Not really. <laughs> it was about the shooting and the, about the shooting. guns. And the All thing. right, so that one doesn't count. No. The one that does count for me is the Army of Two series. Um, has a little bit more of a story. Right, um, especially this last one, because uh, one of the, you know, we saw it coming halfway through the game. But one of the main characters from the last spoiler, two, spoiler, one of the, ma the main spoiler. characters from the last two ends up being sort of the main villain, um, and so that was neat. But you know, I get to a, it's completely cooperative, right? I guess you could play it by yourself, but you're just a, a loser if it's, you do. It's designed to be played. It's designed with to be a co-op game. Um, and, and it, you let me customize my weapon. I mean, the newest one wasn't as good. The, the best customization by far was in the second one. Yeah. Um, but the paint, the paint customization on your weapons was better in the third one, but what you could do and put on your weapon was better in like a the pop, second one. a pop can silencer and yeah. stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, you know... And you it, could interchange barrels from different weapons. Different weapons. Yeah, I couldn't do that on the new one. Like, yeah, it just give me more than just going in, shooting, changing, you know, picking up a dropped weapon, finding ammo for it, right? Um, yeah, I, I, you know, that's... 
I guess that's kind of. I just one of the things I liked about the new, the latest Ghost Recon too, was that you could really do some really cool stuff to your weapons. Yeah, yeah. That's my biggest thing too with the game. I want to be f so fully immersed in what's happening. Happening. Yeah. I want to be committed. I want to be. You know, when I play, if, when I play video games, um, I lock my bedroom door. Um, still living at home. Hashtag awesome. Hashtag deadbeat um and uh i locked the bedroom door I, I put my turtle beach headset on so that all i even turn my tv volume down so i can have it nice and bassy and and i feel immersed in that that part of it um and yeah i like games where i've picked the way my character looks i've picked their 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 clothing i've picked everything um and then also that it's gone so far as to whatever like i've played games where you know, you've, you've changed your character's clothes and you've given him a different gun and then this cutscene comes along and it shows you the default outfit and the default gun and you're like, well, you know, that's not what was... That's not right. That's not me. That's not me. I've, Who is that guy? I've made all these changes, right? So I like games I that go that you. far. Um, and, and that's my biggest problem maybe right now with the, the Assassin's Creed series is that I find it so hard to stay committed to, not committed, but to get, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Connected? Not connected, but, you know, yeah, to really feel for the character and, and, you know, especially, like, the first Assassin's Creed took place over the course of a couple of days. This new one, now, all of them, you know, you, you'll be playing along, you'll finish the mission, and it'll come up and say, 1578. Right, and you've been playing in 1575, and it's like, well, what just like nothing important happened in the last three years, and now my character looks a little bit older. Like, what you know, geez, the last three years have really been hard on him. Mm. He looks like this now, but I don't get to know what happened, right? Like, so I don't, I don't know, but yeah, to me, that's what a video game is is a single player experience to kind of get lost. It's probably why the shooters don't do it for me either, because that's not what I, you know, if I play, um. If I play Mass Effect, I'm fantasizing about being the main character, right? Which is, you know, it's kind of cool. You're the leader of a, a, a captain of a ship and stuff like that. I know I don't fantasize about World War II situations and and stuff like that. What about you, Carl? What do you look for in a first person or in a single player game? Uh, I like go for story too, um, but I also like a, a good gameplay challenge. So. Um, I like it. so in a situation where the story might not be as as uh, good. I, if the gameplay is solid, I'll still really enjoy it. Um, Mirror's Edge good, was like that. Mirror's Edge. Well, Mirror's Edge had a pretty decent story though, but the gameplay definitely was what sold that game, where you're kind of free running in this world. Um, the one that really comes to mind, though, is uh, actually an arcade title called Castle Crashers. Oh, yeah. Uh, the story in that is just stupid, simple. You know, yeah. a bunch of princesses get captured and you got to go save them and you got to re retrieve this royal gem that has magical powers. And it's... What's wrong with and that? There's, there is no other story besides that. I mean, you see this little quick cut scene when you, after you choose your character... And then after that, there's, like, no other story besides you running around doing old-school side-scroller smash em, beat em up stuff, leveling up your character, getting stronger, and just this goofy stuff that happens throughout the game. But there's no story. But the gameplay is simple. It's fun. It's entertaining because of all the goofy jokes that are in it. And Rayman. It's just hilarious. Rayman, yeah. The story's not super huge in that, but the gameplay is just so solid and fun that you just get sucked right into it well heck if you want to go that for super mario right that's kind of where it started yeah, well you know, any old any old school game yeah the story was never really big it was all about the gameplay yeah and i think that's just you know i'm probably a bit of more of an old school gamer than you are i got a couple of years on you so i really i think i have more probably more appreciation for that style of gaming Right, I don't yeah. need the story as much as long as the gameplay is really good. Um, but that being said, I still appreciate a solid 
game with that has, has really good story. Something that um, keeps you up later than you were supposed to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah right. Like uh, the uh, the um, uh, Elder Scrolls games, they had so much story. Right, the the gameplay is really good, but the story is really good because it's literally your story. Right, you decide where you go, what quests you do, what quests you don't do, and how you do them. So mm-hmm. it's it it's uh, that's probably one of the better games story wise in terms of open world that uh, really are a lot of fun. There isn't such thing as too much story. I mean, uh, Max Payne three. Um, I bought that just kind of on a whim, and and literally the game is like twenty minutes of gameplay, half an hour of cutscene. Twenty minutes of gameplay, fifteen minutes of cutscene. Twenty minutes of gameplay, twenty five minutes of cut. Like it, it's just so. You're watching an episode of a TV show in between each, uh, between each mission. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm trying to remember a game. There's a game I know that I, I don't play it myself, but I can, I know there's a game, uh, oh, Metal Gear Solid. So I'm not a, I, I'll probably, people probably give me some flack for this, but I'm not a huge Metal Gear Solid fan, just because I've never played them really, and never really got into them. Uh, I was more into the, uh, some more fast-paced games when they started coming out, so I kind of geared away from them. Um, Met- but Metal uh, geared away from them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I was I was reading. I read. I'd read once that one of the new, not one of the more recent uh, ones that were out on the Xbox and PS2. There was like so many cut. Like the cutscenes in them are gorgeous because I've seen some of the cutscene. Uh, footage they're absolutely beautiful cutscenes in terms of graphics but they're like really long and they're like they happen very frequently mm-hmm. and it's like well am i actually going to get to play yeah <laughs> but i've never played them so i can't say for certain if they're actually like that but that's what i've i've read and heard so cool yeah same 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 idea right there's so much story that there's not that much gameplay. Yeah, it's and it's hard to get into it then too because it's kind of like I'm not actually doing anything. I'm just yeah. watching a movie now. Might as, might as well just watch a movie. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's talk about multiplayer then. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a big multiplayer guy. When I do when I do do multiplayer, go ahead. You said do do. Yeah. <laughs> when I play when I do do when I do multiplayer stuff, it's got to be you know I'll occasionally do worms online with carl or or something like that um there's a few games that we both have uh because it'll generally kind of be you know either carl gets it or i get it and then we just play it and lend it to the other one um which will be real tough when we break up because there'll be a lot of games i like that i don't have (laughs) uh but yeah um you know I, i don't like to go online and play with with people I don't know you know it's the same as when I go paintballing I want to shoot my friend in the head I want to you know um, I want to know who it is that I'm backing up I want to know who it is that's backing me up Um, and and that's just a preference it's not because I think my friends are any better I'm sure there's you know I could probably go online and find people to play with who are way better at video games Um, but yeah it's you know it's just a preference it's it's more fun and then even in that instance, I'd rather just, you know, uh, I'd rather just come over. I'd rather just hang out in person, do split screen, do system link maybe, you know, which is more fun to have that interaction, be in the same room. Um, but then generally when you get into multiplayer, and we're not talking about co-op, we'll talk about co-op later. When you're getting into just multiplayer, um, there goes your story, right? Like it, it it's generally... Because you're trying to sync up, like there's no time for cutscenes. You're trying to sync up, you know, 30 different people from different locations, and and you know, the match just kind of starts and you go. Um, well, you know, what are some what are some example or, or some exceptions to that? Um, I play Call of Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies with, um, I guess the kids just call it zombies. 
uh, with with some friends, Aaron Mater, Chris Nierhoff. Aaron Aaron's probably listened to this far. Chris Nierhoff probably didn't even click the link. <laughs> um, and uh, Josiah, sometimes Josiah comes too, and you know, and that's fun. But again, only in a only in a we all get together and we play it on a split screen kind of kind of atmosphere. Um, the other game that maybe I've there, there are two other multiplayer games that I can tolerate. And again, we're not talking about um, racing because racing, you know, uh, there are a lot of people who are really into like the Forza, Project Gotham, Need for Speed, um, Test Drive. I can't think of any others right now. Uh, but that's you know, and that's fine. I play sometimes. Um, something that I've had a real hankering for lately, actually, and I was saying this to Carl the other day. I'm gonna try and look online and find a cheap one because um, I and I just want to play the heck out of it. Probably a lot more than he wants to. I'm gonna have to convince him a lot. I want to play golf. I want to play Tiger Woods, PGA, and I don't know why, right? But again, it'll be kind of we'll sit and we'll play it together, and and I think it's just it's just fun. It's just a really fun friggin' game for me, and it's a game I used to play a lot when I was younger, kind of with my dad, um, you know. And actually, I played with my dad and my stepdad, but that was before my dad was divorced. So it was kind of a weird situation. Anyways, so I, I think the game maybe has some some subconscious nostalgia for me. Um, but yeah, so anyways, my two exceptions to that would be Halo. And I only like Halo for the multiplayer, and I'll only like it if other people are playing it and there's kind of nothing to play. Um, I hate Halo. I hate the Halo universe. I hate the Halo gameplay. I hate the Halo storyline. And I know I'm going to get flagged for that. I know there's going to be comments. There's going to be people saying nasty things. That's fine. I I really don't like it. Um, yeah, it's just, it to me, I, I just, you know, the game mechanics are so unique. They kind of pioneered a lot of game mechanics. The, the Warthog, driving the Warthog kind of pioneered that kind of vehicle mechanics, um, the stuff with the shields, they kind of, like, you know, it was a very, because the first Halo was going back quite a number of years now. We're looking at, what, 10 years ago? Over 10. Over 10 years ago. So, you know, a lot of, you know, and, and it has inspired a lot of other people to do things the way they do. I don't know why I don't <clears throat> mind that, I don't mind the shield generator thing in Mass Effect, that's fine for me. I just, for some I just don't like it in Halo. So that's, you know, whatever. But like I said, the multiplayer is an exception for me. The other multiplayer game that I could play day in, day out, all day long is GoldenEye. Um, mm, classic. And there's going to be a lot of people who don't know what that is. That's an N64, Pierce Brosnan, 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 Brosnan as 007. James Bond, um, yeah. and it was classic. If you've never played it, if you didn't grow up playing it, you're going to hate it. Oh, yeah. It doesn't play like a first-person shooter. You're going to get on there, and you're going to be like, this sucks. Everything is a square. That guy's face doesn't even look like a face. <laughs> the graphics are so bad. They they did do a re-release a couple of um, year a year or two ago, I guess. Yeah. Um, an anniversary. Sort of a port to the new system. Yeah. And I don't know. I haven't played it. I can't yeah, say right. heads or tails if it's it good. It probably plays pretty good, I would assume. Yeah. Um, but it was it was just classic. And yeah, like I said, a lot of people are going to hate on it. Um, but it's important for you to know it's it was the first first-person shooter of its kind. Um, and it pioneered a lot of, you know, it's like Star Wars for the movie universe, or for the video game universe. If Star Wars hadn't happened, when it happened, the way it happened, a lot of the special effects... A lot of the CGI, we may not be where we are today with that. It kind of kind of kicked that into motion. So what are your feelings on multiplayer, Carl? Well, mine are pretty much the opposite of yours. I love multiplayer. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I also, you know, if I had a choice, I would prefer the couch multiplayer like you. But I had, a, at the same time... You know what? I'll sit on my couch by myself and get into a multiplayer match and just play, play, play. Uh, I gotta do it with that worry. headset. I feel like little whiny twelve-year-olds. <laughs> well, 
they, swearing so, and know, calling people that's, douchebags. That's that is my one beef with uh, you know some of the console multiplayers uh, these days is a lot of the people they'll end up in a private mat in a private if they are in a group together you know they're dropping it they're dropping into matches together uh, as a party they're usually in their own sort of chat lobby you know xbox live you can create a private chat lobby and they'll mm -hmm. spend their time in that chat lobby and nobody else on their team can hear them talk and communicate which is a real drag Some. if you're dropping by yourself and then at the same time a lot of people just won't plug in their headset and there's no communication which bugs me because uh, when I do play all mu multiplayer games I'll play like Halo like I was really big into Halo 2 and Halo 3 when uh, when they when I was uh, when those first came out I played a lot of those online um, but if I had a if, when I have a choice I'll always go for the tactical shooter over the fast paced run and gun shooter like the Rainbow Six and the Ghost Recon because uh, I just like that tactical feel. Right. You know, you got to actually take your time a little bit. You got to communicate with your yeah, team. Yeah, in which and you the need problem, to talk to people. The, the problem is, you know, people they don't plug in their headset or they stay in that party chat with their with their two buddies. Uh, there's no communication to your team, and if the other team is communicating, well, then you're probably going to get your butts kicked. Yeah. If, but, you're, uh, if you're playing Halo you know, or Gears of War it, multiplayer, you don't really need to talk to anyone. Not not so not as much, no. Yeah. Um, but it's it's still helpful, right? And yeah. uh, I really like the like the multiplayer. Like I was uh, when Xbox Live first launched way back on the original, the original Xbox, Xbox, I was within a couple months I had an Xbox Live subscription and I was playing Crimson Skies multiplayer oh, all yeah. the time. I was playing Mech Assault multiplayer Tell everyone all what Crimson the time. Skies was. Oh, okay. Well, Crimson Skies was a uh, airplane. an airplane game and it had all kind of, all your classic gameplay modes, capture the flag and Dog death fight. match and and uh, it had one that was uh, sort of like a tag game mode where you chase the person who's hit around and yeah. if you kill them you're it and uh, kind of a reverse tag, I guess. But it was a lot of fun. The different you choose your plane before the match, and the different planes had different attributes. One would go faster. One would turn tighter. Different weapons. Different weapons on them, and it was just a really fun atmosphere. And back then, everybody was talking on their headset. Yeah. There was nobody in private chat, and there was so it was a re Did always a really great atmosphere. There wasn't a lot of whiny little kids and that's another reason i like playing the heavy tactical games is that you you get fewer of those sort of kids that you always hear about that are playing call of duty or gears because they don't have the whatever. patience for the they don't tactical have yeah game. they don't have the patience for it uh, which is which is kind of nice because i do and you usually i usually always end up running into and playing with because you use you, you you're one of your biggest arguments is that you've got you don't get to play with friends. Well, I end up making friends playing multiplayer. I'll add, they end up be getting added to my friends list, and when I turn on my system or I turn on the game and I see they're online, we instantly group together and we start just uh, to use video game terminology. We start poning noobs, right? <laughs> <laughs> we just start rip ripping it up, right? And it's a uh, it's a good time. And I guess you and, add them uh, to your friend. Yeah, your we add add each other to our friends list, and we're just all we when we see each other on, we just game together. So even though we're not on the same couch, I'm always usually gaming with yeah. somebody I know. But they could um, be they could be sitting there naked for all. Wow, well, that's that's for them to do. I might be sitting there naked. You gen generally are. For, could be a good possibility. Which is why like, we long. anyway. Which is why we couch game less now. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, so you know you, I'm playing. I do feel like I'm playing with people I, I get to know, and it's creating those connections. And uh, it's one of the reasons I, I loved playing MMOs, which that's a, a massive multiplayer games, uh, uh, RP, MMORPGs and stuff like that. But uh, I've played less MMORPGs nowadays because there's a that's a whole another ball of wax. But because uh, it's they they can get fairly repetitive and feel like you're just doing the same you're thing just over, and over, over and over and over and over and over. The quests all kind of feel the same, and I I really dislike that. Um, even though a standard 
shooter multiplayer game is you know you're pretty, similar. pretty much doing the same thing over and over again. Next but the difference, the, the difference is in an MMORPG, it's the quests get repetitive because they say uh, go take this to this person and then come back, or they say go kill ten of these and then come back, and they it's usually something like that, and it's usually always the same five five types of quests they're just telling you to kill something different or they're telling you to get something different or they're telling you to talk to someone different but in a multiplayer uh game like mechware online even though there's only the seven maps and there's always 12 people and you're always just last man standing to the death fight the difference is the fight is always different because the the variations of what mech you take what mech you're team takes and what mechs your opponents take is different and then on top of that how you end up attacking each other is different so the strategies change constantly and mm -hmm. it's constantly the fight the battle is constantly evolving and you need to adapt to it to survive and to help your team win where in an mmorpg the quests are the same and you're just leveling up and then once you hit max level it's all you literally once you hit max level you usually are always doing the exact same quest over and over they call them dailies you're doing the same quest and at the, in 24 hours the quest resets and you can do that exact same quest again just because you need to get better gear and whatever and that's i don't really enjoy that where i do enjoy the adapting to the situations and you know improving my skills as a mech pilot or a shooter or whatever multiplayer game I'm playing. Um, I do want to add one of my fa all-time favorite multiplayer experiences uh, is in a game that completely revolutionized, in my opinion, the way multiplayer works. Um, and that is uh, the Splinter Cell series. Splinter Cell up to the point before Splinter Cell, Spies and, Mercs. Uh, Spies and Mercs, it was everybody's this sort of hero, atypical hero guy with a gun or whatever. Everybody's kind of even playing field. They have the same guns. They have the same gear. You know, everybody's even playing field for a shooter. You know, whoever gets to the power weapon first wins, uh, is going to do better than the other players and controls certain areas of the of the map is going to do better. Where Spicer's Merc said, well, what if... There are the two one, types of guys. What if there are two types of guys, and one is really good at this, but they suck at the other, and the other is good at the thing that the other guys suck at, but they suck at the thing the other guys are good at. So you've got Mercs who play in first-person mode, and they've got weapons that can kill. they got assault rifles and, mo and grenades and mines and trip grenades and... All kinds of crazy stuff, but they can't see in the dark very well, and they move kind of slow, and they're heavily armored. And then you've got the spies, who are stealthy, they don't have weapons that kill, they've got smoke and flash grenades and stuff like that, and the spies have to get infiltrate to a place, get some data, and get out, and the mercs have to defend it. And that gameplay was so revolutionary, I played the crap out of that game. And Arkham Origins has emulated that with their multiplayer because that's that's exactly what it is. You're either a member of Joker or Bane's gang, you're thugs playing in first person mode, or you're uh, Batman or Robin in third person mode. And you're going in and of course you can repel from things and you sneak around, you're doing the stealth, and the other guys are, are much more gun based uh, class. So, all right, and now on to one of my favorite gameplay modes, um, but one that for me I have found is the hardest, it seems like it's the hardest for game developers to get right, and that's co-op multiplayer. Um, yeah, and that, and that brings up my beef with uh, Far Cry 3 from earlier. Far Cry 3 was an amazing game. You had full reign of two or three kind of two and a half islands um vehicles and paragliding and wingsuits and 
climbing towers and guns and hunting and fishing, like just all of these awesome, awesome things. Um, and then co-op comes along and I'm thinking, man, I'm going to get to do all of the wonderful things that I just did with a partner. I'm going to have, so I'm going to be driving the car and he's going to be sitting in the passenger seat. And that's not at all what happened. It was just a bunch of kind of point A to point B. There was no free roam. It was no. point it was A very, to point B it was, maps. It was linear progression through uh, a linear map. Yeah. And that bugged me. And that's and that's the one thing I'm hoping, you know, they've greenlit, they've dropped a couple of hints about what Far Cry 4 is going to be. Because um, this, for them, was their first kind of commercial success was Far Cry 3. It kind of put them for on the, the Far Cry franchise. Yeah. yeah, put them on the map and and the got first one to pay was attention. the first one was pretty critically acclaimed, but uh, it had some. Uh, it wasn't a massive success. The second one did uh, not as decently well. well, but it wasn't as I don't think it just. I think its main problem was it came out around the same time as some critically other bigger games right, it was just and at the out. same time it just didn't have the same marketing uh, campaign behind it far cry 3 they had huge marketing campaign thrown behind it it came out at a time where there wasn't it it was one of the top games yeah. when it came out and, and it looked uh, beautiful yeah, and it was it. absolutely gorgeous yeah and the gameplay was so solid yeah uh, and they yeah they did just a spectacular job on it but yeah Ubisoft I, is one of my favorite developers and, yeah I love co-op though. I love you know. Uh, what have we What have we done? We've done. Um, we did Vegas, Rainbow Vegas. Yeah, we've done Vegas. We did a Army of Two. Little bit of Gears of our. We've done a little bit of uh, Ghost Recon. We did some Gears of War. We've done uh, almost all of the Army Two. We still got to finish the third one. But, yeah. Um, um, some of the Lego games, if you can count that, that's kind of co-op, I guess. Well, that, that's co-op, yeah, I count uh, that. We've it's, done it's, the two newer the same games. single player, but it's still, yeah. it's still co-op. But that's what I like. That's games, what I yeah. want. That's what I want is Far Cry 4 to have a storyline that you could just play one of the other guys that I'm going through the game with, right? Like, yeah. you know, that when, when Voss or whoever the bad guy is going to be is talking to me... There's no reason why he can't be talking to the two of us, right? The movie, the the game makers are smart enough are to be able to program that in that they know that I'm making I'm I'm playing with another person. So instead of him saying you, he's saying you guys, or he's mm -hmm. speaking, you know, he's speaking well, even to two if, people. Even if they don't change the story, they can still add it in. I mean, I've played a few co-op games. Um, I can't remember which ones they were, but I remember them very vividly. That where it's uh, I'm pretty. Sure it might be the ghost. Uh, one of the Ghost Recon Tom Clancy games. It was probably the Ghost. Uh, no, Rainbow Six. It was the Rainbow Six games. Rainbow Six games. You play a specific character, mm -hmm. but um, you end up uh, after the cu during the cutscenes. It's just one person, but after the cutscene, yeah, it's, it's split true. screen. There is two of you all of a sudden, which is so, fine. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't take away from the story really. No. Uh, it just it just uh, yeah, it still it just allows you to play the game through with somebody. Yeah, and there are so many neat games right now that that you know that could implement that Arkham or the Arkham series would be really cool like that. I'd have no problem running around as Nightwing while someone else is Batman or running around as even you know I could even do Robin. I'd play as Robin. Um, Turn that off. Huh. Um, Carl's going to look up something on my computer here. Uh, better be appropriate, Carl. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it... Uh, you know, Arkham would be cool doing that. Um, Assassin's Creed could even pull it off to a degree. Um, yeah, I don't know. you got to click... you got to click that. I don't have it. I disabled the touch... Sorry about this, folks. Carl's an, uh, an idiot. Um, dead air. Dead air is bad. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I just really like co-op. I like playing through with someone else. Um, my one kind of beef with it... My one kind of beef with, with co-op is the fact that... Um, I like to move slowly through a video game atmosphere. I like to take 
the beautiful landscape that a game developer has made and kind of explore it to the fullest and stuff. And that doesn't always work out when you're doing co-op because you have someone else running ahead and then they run ahead and that activates a checkpoint and the checkpoint activates a cutscene and now you're in a new area and so on and so forth. What about you, Carl? Co-op? Um, I'm trying to look up uh, one of the first Xbox games that came out that uh, sp supported uh, four-player co-op. Uh, and uh, it's one of the first games I remember that actually had uh, a co-op uh, component to it where you were actually, there was four specific characters who, uh, who, play, who, you, who you could choose to play as and they all played kind of differently and uh, I'm trying to look it up. I can't find it. I'm. It, I'm all. I. I feel like it. That uh, somewhere in the name it was was uh, was the word brutal. But anyway, if you know the name of the game, I'm t trying to remember. It was one of the original Xbox titles, right near the beginning of Xbox's launch. Come comment down uh, below. Yeah, give. Try and help me out here. But anyway, it was uh, it was a pretty cool game. You know, you had four unique characters. One guy was a sniper. One guy had a big heavy gun. One dude was this lizard guy that had like this berserker ability, and uh, the fourth guy I can't remember. But it was a really kind of cool game. It did, didn't do super good, but it was actually it was really cool in the, that you know it offered this four-player co-op ability. Uh, that one and uh, Halo both offered the co-op, and it was uh, it was really neat that uh, this is when it start this is kind of the, that generation was where this co-op mentality really started to spring up and then you just, it just kind of took off from there and games like uh gears of war and uh army of two just kind of took it to that next level where it was uh it was almost it was encouraged that co-op is definitely the way you play this particular game um and there are some games that have done it really well, and there are some games that have done it really bad. And yeah, I don't, I'm not a, I don't, I, I really like co-op. Uh, there are times when it feels like, even though the game is really good co-op, you just don't want to play it because your partner <coughs> Brady just throws doesn't grenades. know how to freaking play the game. He just throw I mean, throws grenades. You try playing Splinter Cell Convictions co-op with this whoa, guy. Whoa, You think I'm he good. would know how to be a stealthy ninja. I'm good. No. I'm good. No. no, it's like you're sneaking around and all of a sudden the alarms start going off. It's like, I was in the shadows. What were you doing? I was just running over here. I was in daylight. I was going to talk to this guy who had the gun for directions. And ask him which way we needed to go. I'm sorry that I give people the benefit of the doubt. Just because he has... Okay, you want to get racist here. Just because he has a turban on doesn't mean he's going to shoot me. In that game, it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, true, true, true. And the but, biggest, the worst you know, one for me... It can get... Co-op games can get really frustrating, especially when they're they become tactical, like... The, the Ghost Recon and the... the Tactical, uh, very much, yeah. The uh, Splinter Cell series. They get... And even even Army of Two, which is a little more, more run and gun, it gets really frustrating when you die stupidly and then the next time you, res you have to respawn because you ended up both dying and then the next time... He dies, and then you die trying to save him, and you have to respawn. And then right. you, it just gets super frustrating. It's like, go why the heck is wrong with my partner who's sitting right next to me? Is he dunce? <laughs> and it just gets frustrating sometimes. I'd like to point out, I'm not... It I really... Think you I and think, I die equally when I we're think, playing games. I, I was saying you die, then I die. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it's a... Uh, co-op games, cert, it's not all, but certain co-op games can be re a real friendship tester, right? Um, like, you try playing, like, a Splinter Cell with your buddy, and you both have a different take on how you should play the game, right? Maybe, because Splinter Cell, you can play it run and gun, right, if you want. 
Right? You can play really aggressive or you can play really stealthy. If one of you wants to play really stealthy and the other person doesn't, you're going to have some conflict. And if you don't have a, you know, some kind of good, decent relationship, there's going to be some stress there. <laughs> I find with Splinter Cell, I always, like, if I'm playing by myself, I play extremely stealthy. Pretty sure I played Blacklist all the way through without ever making a kill. If I you didn't don't when to. you play co-op, though. I don't when I play co-op. and I <laughs> Which think bugs me, because I still want to play stealthy yeah, when I, I do play co-op. I think the reason why is because I just, I always want to make the kill. <laughs> so I'm, I'm being more aggressive to kill them before you can kill them. Um, a game that was really good for this, uh, Portal 2, had amazing oh, co-op. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Portal because it, was the, great. it just yeah. gave you a whole bunch of brand new puzzles that you needed two people for yeah but again the same situation comes up right if you're not communicating well you can get into you know go over there yeah now you go over there yeah <laughs> or or lasers right someone will you'll you end up dying because yeah. the other person yeah wasn't uh another problem with that co-op games have and it, not everybody's like this like we don't we we do it a little bit to each other but we're not too bad some people will uh, be absolute jerks to their <laughs> friends. Uh, we do this, it this, funny. This, the, ter the term is known as griefing, where you purposely cause your friend to die, yeah. or you purposely cause them to screw up and uh, do something they shouldn't do. We rarely do it, but when we do, we'll do it like six times. Like we just drive the joke into the ground. We do it six yeah. times in a we row. We get it done with and then go back to business. <laughs> yeah. We did that a lot with Rayman recently. Yeah. So Carl, what kind of games are you looking forward to? What is coming up that you know of? Or or even, you know, maybe nothing's really been announced, but a game that you really want a sequel to? Well, I haven't been paying too closely attention to what's been going on in uh, the video game verse. Uh, I think it's mostly due to business in life and the fact that I don't have and can't afford a next gen system, which I'm normally totally bummed out. Normally I would be an early adopter to the next generation, but this time around I'm just kinda like, you know what, I don't have the money. There's I don't really have the time. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna hold off and see what happens. Wait till they get cheap. Yeah. Pick one so up. but that being said, uh, I would I did to get a good look at some of the what the developers were looking forward to doing with the next gen stuff, and the next gen stuffs really were my, were what I what I kind of look at and I say, yeah, I could play that. Um, the first game probably would be um, Destiny from uh, from uh, Bungie. That game mm -hmm. looks really cool. Uh, it's kind of got uh, a um, Mass Effect feel, or if you mix Mass Effect with Halo, that's kind of the feel I get from that game, where you've got this fast-paced shooter, first-person shooter action, with a decent, with a pretty good storyline, and then you mix in Mass Effect, where you've got this really cool uh, shooter RPG level up your guy uh, mechanic, and then infuse all kinds of really cool story into it so that one really got my attention um the division looked really cool yeah um ubisoft ubisoft's my favorite developer uh in my mind they can't go wrong i i can't remember the last game they made that i didn't like i didn't like what was that uh there were two that i don't like by tom clancy and he generally always uses ubisoft doesn't he yeah, Ubisoft owns the I franchise don't like title. Hawks. Oh, I loved Hawks. And I don't like End War. End War to me End was War, a big... I didn't End like War it as was, a cons, as a platform. No, it would have been better on a PC, uh, but uh, it was still a it was still a good game. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't like uh, their top tier games like Ghost Recon and Splinter Cell and. It was a. But it was, it was an still RTS. good. It was still it was still a good game. I thought. Um, it wasn't as good as normal. It was it was a break from what they're used to doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Division by Ubisoft, Tom Clancy game, um, is looking really cool. And uh, there was one other uh, that I can't remember at the moment. Maybe I'll come back to it if I can remember it. 
All right. Well, I'll I'll lay down my list while you're thinking. Um, my list is fairly similar. Uh, you know, obviously, when another Assassin's Creed comes out, I'm going to buy it. Doesn't mean it's not. You know, it's probably bottom of my list right now. Um, always looking for a new Arkham game. Uh, you know, there's a lot of kind of hinting back and forth about what's going on with that. For anyone who follows that. Um, the voice of Batman, Kevin Conroy, in the first two kind of accidentally dropped the bomb or dropped the ball or let the cat out of the bag about a project, an Arkham game project that he wasn't supposed to at the Dallas Comic Con. Um, and he quickly kind of covered it up. And, uh, and so, yeah, so there's that. Um, very much looking forward to The Division, looking forward to... Watch Dogs. Looking forward to Titanfall because Titanfall is like that mech. It's a combination between mech and first person mm. stuff. Titanfall caught a little bit of my attention. Yeah. Um, yeah. As far as that, I you know they're talking about a fourth Mass Effect, but they're saying that Commander Shepard's storyline is done, so it's just gonna kind of take the series elsewhere. Well, which, if you play the third one, you can understand why. Yeah, and I'm, 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 I'm assuming I'm not Commander, spoiling it for him, because I'm he's, assuming he Commander Shepard either dies or is beheaded, one of the two. Um, <laughs> but, uh, which is kind of a letdown for me, to be honest, because I've really gotten into those games. Thanks for ruining that, Carl. Um, I didn't say anything. You're assuming. Uh, you know what assuming does. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I'm in the same boat. You know, I, I would love an Xbox One. I'm Carl and I are both Xbox players. Um, mostly for me, I like my biggest problem with PlayStation is a controller. If I could, if I could use an Xbox controller with a PlayStation, I whatever wouldn't make a difference to me. Give me, give me a PlayStation. Um, it's just the controller. I hate it. I hate the PlayStation controller. Uh, it's never felt comfortable. It's always felt like it's going to slip out of my hand. Um, so yeah, my biggest issue right now, though, as far as holding off with an Xbox One, well, I mean, I don't have any money right now. I'm, you know, dead broke, and I'd love an Xbox One, but it just doesn't look like it's going to happen um, anytime soon. But The Division, which is coming out on... Um, oh, to be, re to be released... To be decided. Yeah, they haven't uh, given a release date yet. They haven't given a date. So it it's a ways away. They do, on the Wikipedia site here, they have a, a, a broad window for the fourth quarter of 2014. But that's probably, I would say that's an assumption by whoever put the Wikipedia site together. And if they, yeah, and I mean, it's, if, if it's that... It's probably no confirmation from Ubisoft no. whatsoever. If that does Ubisoft, hold any weight... Especially over the last few years, Ubisoft's been kind of done uh, what Blizzard's been known for and kind of done the it'll be done when it's done yeah. tagline. Um, they've gone as far as sort of pretty much trash canning and uh, zip tying games to the point where... You don't hear about them for a year or two, and then come back out and say we've redone the whole game from the ground up. Yeah, they've done. They did it most recently. Uh, they did it with the Tom Clancy Convictions game. Or yeah. The, uh, Ghost. Uh, sorry, Splinter Cell oh, Convictions, sure. where uh, years ago they when they first released uh, footage of it at E3, they kind of had this very twenty four. Uh, TV show feel to it where there was less stealth, more action, and sort of using the environment as a weapon stuff. And you're when you're fighting hand to hand, and kind of the stealth was more of like Assassin's Creed where you're blending in with the crowd. And then all of a sudden, a few months later, because of sort of the comments they had gotten at E3 where it said, Well, this doesn't look or feel like a sat or, or what we're Splinter used to Cell. with Splinter Cell, uh, they kind of all of a sudden, nobody, you hear, heard nobody heard anything about it for almost a year and a half, two years, and they come back out of E3 and say, Boom. here's here's our game. And it was phenomenal. Uh, the game all of a sudden was just like Splinter Cell again, stealth, shadows, uh, action still there with lots of cool weapons and cut some customization. Uh, the only real downfall to that game was there was no spies versus mercs. 
which was a huge uh, incorporation and had become a huge part of Splinter Cell. Uh, more recently, Ubisoft did the same thing with uh, Tom Clancy's uh, um, Ghost Rainbow Six. Uh, they had Patriots, and they had all this really good-looking cinematic footage, and they had some gameplay footage, and then all of a sudden, nothing. Mum's the word. They won't say anything about it except for that it's still in development. Yeah. So they're they're most likely revisiting and stuff like that. So, anyways, yeah, with the division though, um, and I, I, you know, I can imagine if it's gonna be about a year, they're probably gonna aim for a Christmas release, um, yeah. or it's, October. It's uh, it's a pretty ambitious game from um, the looks of it. But yeah, so one of my big problems is gonna be I'm not a I am not a PC gamer. Um, I don't. I don't play a whole lot of games on the computer. Uh, it has been announced, though, that the three platforms that you're going to be able to play The Division on will be Windows, Xbox One, or PlayStation 4. And that might be... Next-gen exclusives. That might be the turning point. I may, if if the money's in the right place, I may go so far as to buy Carl an Xbox One uh, just so that we can play this game together. Um, it's going to be tough, you know, it, if... if if over a year has passed and I don't have an Xbox One yet, I'm going to be, you know, it's going to be tough. Because, yeah, and I think, you know, there's there's rumors that the next Arkham may be a, a next-gen exclusive and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Oh, and there's one other game that I am so looking forward to. I can't even, you know, I, 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 will, I will order every exclusive collector's edition that ever exists for this. Uh... Star Wars Battlefront, Battlefront Three. Oh yeah, I am. That is gonna That's be exciting news. That is gonna be a very, 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 very unproductive week when that comes out. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm just really excited for it. Anyways, that does it for us. It's uh, it's actually just after one and or quarter after one in the morning right now. Um, Yay, late nights. Yeah, I'm tired. Uh, like I said, I don't know how often this is going to happen. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, could could happen once a week. Could never happen again if nobody listens to this and it doesn't turn out well. Uh, let us know what you think. Does this need to be shorter? Is it a good length? Would you like more? Um, what kind of things do you want to hear us talk about? Do you have a suggestion for the name? Uh, should Carl shave his beard? You know, like, just just pretty much anything you want to tell us, we'll, we'll take and and not necessarily do, but, you know... Well, we'll probably do everything except for Carl shaving, shaving his beard. Um, you know, yeah, we could do movie reviews. We could do, we'll do pretty much anything. Um, we're so desperate. Um, yeah, you know, there's two different places where you can listen to this right now. Uh, you're either listening it, well, you're definitely listening to it in one of the two places. Uh, it's going to go up on YouTube, on my second YouTube channel, uh, Brady Official Brady TV or Brady TV Official two um and on soundcloud uh and uh the cool thing about soundcloud is you can download a copy of this um if you decide you like us enough that you want to listen to it in the car or fall asleep to us or light some candles and sit in the bath and listen to us you know like whatever it is that, a little creepy there, whatever so. it is that you want to do uh you can download it stick it on your phone um yeah you know well, until next time. Until next time, which will hopefully be next Wednesday. Yeah. It, but if you're not listening this to this on a Wednesday, or the day that we've released it, then that you're confused now and it doesn't make any sense. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. What? <laughs>